Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of Close by Mo. My name is Mohammed. I'm hopefully your favorite YouTube host on most things real estate. I'm also a real estate investor and a broker based out in New York City. And in this week's episode, we're gonna cover something that is mainly more for the commercial real estate world. That is one of the most important tools that commercial real estate investors have in their arsenal. That is the 1031 exchange. Don't go anywhere because now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how you can be investing and growing your real estate portfolio without paying anything in taxes. Now, the 1031 exchange is probably by far one of my most favorite tools in the uh, you know, IRS's arsenal that definitely helps real estate investors. And let me explain to you a couple of the key advantages when it comes to why the 1031 exchange is crucial for making sure that real estate keeps growing in the United States of America. Now, one of the most important benefits, obviously the whole purpose behind the 1031 exchange is that it's a tool for tax deferral. It doesn't necessarily mean that you don't pay any taxes, but effectively in theory, you can keep deferring the taxes until you basically move on to the next world, right? And at that point, you're not really liable for any of your tax bills. So essentially the way it would work is, let's say you purchase a property for $100 and in a couple of years you sell for $200 and you now have made a profit or capital gains of $100. If you were to just sell that property and you know keep the money in your bank account, then you'd be responsible for capital gains tax on that $100 profit margin that you just made. However, if you were to 1031 your money into let's say another project, a bigger project, then you're not responsible for any capital gains tax on that $100 profit. So basically it's a really good way for especially new investors to start to diversify their portfolio because what you're able to do is you can start to 1031 funds from residential projects onto bigger and better commercial projects, which leads me to my third advantage, which is that you can start to have increased cash flow. Not just the fact that you're not you know, responsible for calculating taxes or your debt, or your, I'm sorry, your tax obligations in your initial calculations because you're, you know, you're gonna be planning on 1031-ing it, but because you're 1031-ing you know, your capital gains onto bigger and better projects, you're effectively you know, sort of opening your, uh, your portfolio up to increased cash flow because those bigger projects typically will tend to hopefully have better cash flow than the smaller projects. And of course, the fourth advantage here is the fact that 1031 Exchange is an absolutely fantastic way to start accumulating wealth in real estate because of the fact that since you're not responsible for paying taxes and assuming you keep the money flowing in the economy for business investment purposes, you're able to keep purchasing bigger and better projects, assuming you know you you sort of exit out of the existing projects and you're able to make a capital gain. Of course, this wouldn't apply if you're losing money on every single project, which probably you should reevaluate why you're in the real estate business to begin with. Now, a couple of the uh, eligibility criteria when it comes to the 1031 exchange is that it has to be a like kind property. That means, you know, it's gotta be, you know, you can't exchange real estate for like a business. You can't go from like a, uh, you know, you, you can't go from like a residential uh, house to like a, a boat or like a yacht investment. It has to be real estate and you can get a little bit more nitty gritty about the specific type of real estate as well that you're exchanging one for the other. One other you know, qualification criteria is that it has to be of equal or greater value, meaning you cannot 1031 exchange from a smaller project or a small property to a smaller property. Um, you have to go from that specific property to something much larger. You cannot go from one property to a smaller property and then pocket the difference or you know, pay the difference in taxes. You have to go from property A to property B and property B has to be larger than property A. The third qualification criteria is that there is a 45 day and 180 day deadline. Meaning once you sell your specific property, you have to within a month and a half, so within 45 days, you have to identify a potential replacement property and you have 180 days, so you have six months roughly to complete the actual exchange. So these are hard deadlines. So you have to identify a property within a month and a half and you have to close on that property within 180 days of you selling your initial property. So it is a little bit of a crunch mode. You can't just sort of say, hey, I'm 1031-ing this money and I'll, you know, I'll buy something in a couple of years. No, the, the government is smarter than that. You're gonna wanna have to uh, have a deadline for yourself to be at least identify a property before you're already completed with your initial sale. The, uh, the fourth qualification criteria is that you have to use a qualified intermediary. Basically what this means is you have to use a CPA or some kind of accounting firm that knows what they're doing. You can't just go to your mom and pop shop. You have to make sure that you're using a firm that has a lot of experience in 1031 or is licensed to be able to do that. The fifth requirement is that there is a limitation on personal use. 
You cannot use 1031 exchange to buy a property that you're gonna be using for personal use. You can't use the money or the profits to be able to buy a property that you're gonna be using as a primary residence. It has to be for business or investment purposes. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it because I love the 1031 exchange as an investment tool, especially to help new investors minimize their tax obligation. I'll catch you guys next week. Bye-bye.